Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris, I'm from AmityTutors.com and in this video we're going to be looking at iodine and sodium thiosulfate redox titrations. Now this video is basically going to look at, like I say, this specific type of titration, the iodine and sodium thiosulfate one, and we're going to go through the key steps needed to work out what can be quite a long calculation process, but through each step I'm going to uh, guide you through it and I'm going to explain why we're actually calculating these numbers and I've got some diagrams as well to help illustrate what's actually happening. Okay, so the main reason why we're actually doing these titrations is to work out the concentration of an oxidizing agent and in this case the oxidizing agent we're going to be using is potassium iodate which is KiO3. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the steps first and then I'm going to show you and uh, go through like a worked example and show you how you can calculate it. So, like I said, the key aim is to work out the concentration of the oxidizing agent in this case is this. The first thing we do with this reaction is we set up the reaction to oxidize as much I minus ions to I2 as we possibly can. So this is the reaction that we've got here. So this is IO3, which is our um, iodate ion, and this has come from potassium iodate. This is our oxidizing agent. And what this is doing is it's oxidizing I minus uh, to form I2. So I minus is colorless, uh, and this is acidified, and so that's why we've got 6H plus there as well. Uh, and this is going to form iodine, which is like a brownish color uh, in solution, like a dark brown color. And we're also going to form water as well. Now, with this reaction, we have to have a fixed amount of the oxidizing agent. So I've said here that we put in 25 centimeters cubed of oxidizing agent, um, and we add excess iodide ions. And basically what's going to happen is the iodate will oxidize um, as much as it can, and um, the iodide ions, some of the iodide ions, to iodine. And that's the first reaction you do without any titration involved whatsoever. Um, so then what we do after that is then we take this solution here, and we titrate it with sodium thiosulfate. Now sodium thiosulfate is used because it will react with I2, which is the iodine which you produced in your previous reaction, and it will reduce it um, down to I minus again, and uh, you'll see a color change. It will start to change color, and this will go to like a very pale, almost colorless solution, very, very pale yellow solution. However, um, this can be really difficult to see, uh, and so what we do is we add starch to this solution, uh, and adding starch basically tells us if we have any iodine left after we've added our thiosulfate, and it's the sodium thiosulfate that we're adding in here. So um, we add our starch in just when it gets to a pale yellow colour, add some starch in. If the solution is black, then that means we still have iodine present and we need to add a little bit more sodium thiosulfate until that black colour disappears, which means we don't have any more iodine left for the thiosulfate to react with. And what we're actually doing is we're doing this to find out how many moles of iodine uh, we have actually made as a result of the oxidizing agent oxidizing the iodide ions. And what we can do is we'll have the thiosulfate, we'll know the concentration of the thiosulfate. In this case, I'm going to use 0.1 moles per dm cubed. And obviously, we know the volume of it with it being a titration. And the volume is going to be 13.4 centimeters cubed. Like I said, these are just example numbers. In the exam, it might be slightly different for you. Okay, with these numbers, what we can do is work out the number of moles of thiosulfate, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. So you can see we've got a volume, we've got a concentration. So the moles of thiosulfate is effectively the concentration times by the volume, and the volume is got to be in decimeters cubed, remember, so we need to take this and divide this by a thousand to get it into decimeters cubed, but our concentration is effectively uh, 0.1 times by 13.4. Now that needs to be in decimeters cubed, so I'm just going to put times by 10 to the minus 3 at the end because that means the same as divide by a thousand. Uh, and effectively, what we'll get is the number of moles of thiosulfate. And the number of moles of thiosulfate is 1.34 times by 10 to the minus 3. Okay, right now, once we've got that. Now what we can do is we can work out the number of moles of iodine um, because we need to relate this back into our original equation when we come on to it in step three to work out the number of moles of this and then work out the concentration. So that's why we're working out the number of moles of iodine. Now we need to use our molar ratio here. So we've got the number of moles of thiosulfate, this is 1.34, 
but it's a two to one ratio. So effectively the number of ID is going to be half the number of moles of this, because it's a two to one ratio. So we're going to take this number, 1.34 times by 10 to the minus three, and we're going to divide that by two, and that should give us the number of moles of iodine to be 6.7 times by 10 to the minus four. And that's the moles. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is we're then going to go back to equation one, and we're going to work out the number of moles of iodine, which is IO3 minus, because now we know the number of moles of iodine, which is this one here, and we can then work out the number of moles of this. Now, this was the moles we had of iodine, which is 6.7. You can see here in this equation, it's a three to one ratio. So for every three moles of iodine produced, it used up one mole of oxidizing agent, produced three moles of iodine. So we're gonna take the number of moles of iodine, which is 6.7 times by 10 to the minus four, and we're going to divide that by three because we want to work out the number of moles of ideas. Uh, so we put that in our calculator. Uh, we should get 2.23 times by 10 to the minus four. Moles, which goes on there. And then the last step is to work out the concentration of iodate ions. And that's ultimately what our key aim was. Because now we know the number of moles of iodate ions, we can put it into our equation to work out concentration. So concentration is effectively the number of moles divided by the volume. The volume's got to be in decimeters cubed as well. So if we put that in, there's the number of moles that we worked out before, which is 2.23 times by 10 to the minus four. Uh, and we're going to divide that by the volume. And our volume is 25 centimeters cubed of oxidizing agent. So I'm going to put 25 on there. But that has to be in decimeters cubed, so we're going to divide that by 1,000. So I'm going to put times by 10 to the minus 3 on there. And then we put that into our calculator, and we should come out with a concentration of 8.92 times by 10 to the minus 3. Oops. Let's write that out again. So it's 8.92 times by 10 to the minus 3. And obviously that's moles per dm cubed. There you go, and that's your answer. So just in summary, all you have to do is make sure you, you start off with your reaction first, produce your iodine, you then titrate that with your thiosulfate to work out the number of moles of iodine that was produced as a result of your oxidizing agent. And then once you've done that, you then go back to your original equation, work out the number of moles of iodine ions, which was your oxidizing agent, and hence work out the concentration. Now, I did this video as a result of somebody requesting this, uh, one of my subscribers requesting this video. So um, if there's any other uh, videos that you can't see on my playlist, uh, I will try and get them done as soon as I can. But uh, for that person, I hope that helps in particular. That's it. Bye.